morning, Mats. Good morning. I'm Nancy Macklin from PMA, and I am honored to introduce you to Pedro Calero of PC Construction Group, our sponsor for today's session, Ask Me Anything operations. I know it says maintenance there, but it's operations. <laughs> Pedro will also be here for uh, the maintenance session later on today. Okay, Pedro. Hello, my dear. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, like Nancy said, my name is Pedro Calero. I'm the owner of PC Constructions. And uh, welcome to the PM Expo 2020. <laughs> Ask me anything operation. Today, uh, Steam speaker is Rick Lohman, Director of Engineering of Stow and Take. Welcome, Rick. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. Rick has a wealth of knowledge uh, and experience across all aspects of commercial and residential engineering and facility manager. Rick has also served honorably in the United States Air Force. Thank you, Rick, for that amazing service to uh, these amazing nation and thank you very much you're welcome thank uh, you we also thank him for the service of this amazing amazing nation like i say pc construction is very honored to to uh sponsor this um this meeting these sessions and welcome rick once more and this year thank you so when Tom asked me about um, ask me anything, uh, what are some of the questions that you get asked and, and ask me anything? Um, uh, I said quite a bit. I said, well, I don't even know where to start. Uh, you know, he said, well, what, what are the most common? I said, That's hard, too, because it, it kind of depends on where the questions come from. You know, um, it, it takes a lifetime of experience to learn things with regard to physical asset and construction you know, there's carpentry, there's electric, there's mechanical, there's heating and air conditioning, there's the plumbing, there's foundations, outside erosion, storm drainage. There's just so many, so many components to a physical asset that an engineer or a supervisor or a property manager or uh, a property management a professional is responsible for. They lean heavily on their, um, uh, you know, their, their contractors and, and partners and vendors, uh, things like that for resources. Uh, they also use resources with uh, regard to the internet is just incredible. I, I, I hardly a day goes by that I don't use the internet as a resource myself. Um, you know, but uh, along with the partners, you know, you're, you're talking to folks who are who are your um, uh, partners within the same company. You know, and, and the key is asking questions. You know, so when Tom you know, talked to me about um, uh, doing this thing, ask me anything, it, it made perfect sense because. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that is important for a property management professional is to ask a lot of questions when you start getting into a project. <clears throat> uh, Nancy, did you uh, want to start with anything or you want me to keep, keep rolling? Uh, well, I want to ask um, anybody that's in the audience, uh, Danny, Sharon, does, does anybody have a question sure. specifically sure, for Rick? Our biggest challenge here also hiring in the trades is um, finding new employees. Find, what's your source? Where do you find employees? Where do you start the search? So um, uh, one of the things that um, uh, that I do with is, is I try to grow folks from within. So I'm not always looking for somebody who is who has already have, has the experience, but yet the ability to gain the experience or the knowledge has the mechanical aptitude. So um, I might broaden my search, you know, to outside the property management professional uh, or construction industry uh, into auto mechanics and things of that nature. You know, folks who kind of uh, grew up working with their mother or father on projects around the house, you know, that might be looking for a change in career. Um, there are a lot of new outlets as well with, you um, uh, you know, technical, you know, vocational schools and programs. Uh, PMA is, is very involved with uh, vocational programs and recruiting from that aspect as well. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you, you always run ads and get your resumes and, you know, call folks in. But uh, um, PMA uh, has been an incredible partner with regard to networking. You know, getting to know folks and, and knowing people is really really a great source for getting getting wonderful people as well. 
Yes. We, uh, we are always struggling to find people to work in the mold remediation field. And mm. it's not something that I can promote from within because we do need more. The guys that are, are here, you know, are, are certainly doing their thing, but I'm always looking for more. And of course we use Indeed and the post, but not been very lucky lately. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we run most of our ads in, 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 in Indeed but I, I, I lean heavily on, um, on word of mouth and talking to people uh, and as well, um, you know, meeting folks uh, out and about going, you know, um, I, I picked up a guy uh, one time at a muffler shop, <laughs> went to a muffler shop, get a muffler put on, was talking with him. He was just really good with his hands and mm -hmm. seemed sharp and quick and good with customer service and had all of the, uh, the aside skills that, that, are, that are also hard to find, mm -hmm. you know, that you're sure. looking for in, in someone. So, yeah. Very good, thank you. Yep. Does anybody else have a question for Rick? Feel free to ask or put it in the chat either way. <clears throat> so I'll kind of go into, um, uh, I did um, some education with Southern Management when I was with Southern Management. I was with them for 28 years and I taught at their training academy, um, uh, you know, not only technical classes, but property management classes. Um, Southern um, uh, was really strong in, uh, in training and uh, they offered to property managers a number of cl courses. One that I taught was, um, uh, was on physical asset. And when you're talking about physical asset, again, I'll, I'll repeat that, you know, it takes a lifetime of experience really to, to you know, to just run into the, you know, to get the training opportunities uh, to see roofing or concrete or masonry or carpentry or plumbing, electrical, and things of that nature. So <clears throat> one of the key things that we, uh, we talk about in there is using your resources and asking questions. Uh, it, it, can't, it can't be more important uh, to developing uh, your knowledge base and your skills. Um, just knowing nomenclature uh, is real important. Um, you know, what, what is a fascia? What is soffit? You know, what is a pitched roof versus a flat roof? If you're having a conversation or asking somebody uh, in construction uh, about something and they throw a term out there that you're unfamiliar with, you get hung up on the term, so you really don't get a chance to hear the explanation. Uh, somebody starts talking about a soffit, you're still wondering what a soffit is while they're explaining, explaining what the soffit is, what it does and how it works and how it should be installed or repaired or, or things of that nature. So questions and, and building your knowledge base you might not need to know how to put in a soffit, but you need to know where a soffit is located, if that, if that makes any sense, so. Rick, in terms of um, uh, buildings, um, you know, we're here in Bethesda, there's a lot of old buildings. Of course, there's a lot of new ones going up too. But if I'm a property manager of an older building, how long do I expect to have our my systems um, work before they have to be replaced or I'm looking at heavy repair bills? Well, that's a, that's a good question. A lot of questions I get are life cycle questions. You know, how long should this roof last before I have to replace it again? Or I know this roof is 10 years old. When should I be looking to replace it? Well, uh, again, life cycles uh, vary depending upon what type, uh, what you're talking about, whether you could be talking about a chiller that has a 20 to 25 year uh, life cycle. Uh, now that said, I've, I've had chillers run 35, 40 years before they need to be replaced. Uh, good maintenance programs, preventive maintenance programs, things of that nature. You also take a look at runtime. Is it just, it's just, just in, in this area, a chiller is not running as often as it is, does in Florida. Uh, so uh, you're not getting as many hours of runtime. So where the typical lifespan of a chiller might be 20, 25 years in Florida, you might get 40 years out of it around here. Now that said, I, I don't know that I would hedge and budget 40 years down the road. I'd be looking at that 20 to 25 year mark and trying to figure out where that starts to fit in, evaluate as that time approaches, evaluating its condition uh, and the amount of uh, service or, or, or maintenance I've had to do, do, uh, do with it. Uh, same thing with roofs, uh, uh, flat roofs um, and pitch roofs are different, you know, pitch roofs, uh, depending upon how much weather or sun it takes, uh, 
I've, I've seen pitch roofs uh, last well beyond the life of the shingle. Uh, the shingle might be a 35 year shingle, 40 year shingle, but the pitch roof might last even longer than that if it's um, uh, not getting a whole lot of uh, weather uh, with regard to sun and and uh, degrading the, um, the material and stuff. So uh, using my, my professionals really is where I go to on that. So if I'm if I'm looking at my roofs and evaluating, I'm a property manager and I'm not real familiar with all of those things, I would bring in the professionals and the partners that I work with, whether it be the roofing contractor or PC construction or, or Topher construction, and talk to them about, you know, how long should I, you think I should get, you know, with regard to this particular uh, product or item. Uh, and as soon as you hit step foot on the property, start accumulating that information. Don't just ask it and not write it down. Start, start a file, you know, mm -hmm. start a file. Uh, one thing that I found we do uh, quite a bit of with regard to uh, refinancing in residential and is a great resource for that information, uh, as well as um, a resource we use in commercial, is, um, uh, is when they, they you know, take a look at your entire property and your community and they, do, they perform an inspection. The mortgage company sends out inspectors, perform inspections, and they start documenting, you know, this roof is this age suspect it might need to be replaced within the next five or 10 years. So you can pull out uh, a lot of that information from those ins uh, mortgage inspections as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that was a, yeah. that was a good answer. <laughs> um, does anybody else have a question for Rick? We've got several people in here. Don't be shy, go ahead and turn your mic on and um, ask away. Um, or you can also post your question in the chat. Um, so if I'm if I'm looking at it, um, you know an HVAC system or something else that might last several years, am I going to run into problems with obsolete parts? Um, might that be a signal as to when I need to replace something? Well, yeah. And can you talk a little bit too about um, getting bids for? Um, repair or replace, how, how to evaluate those. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're talking about um, uh, uh, obsolete components. Uh, quite often a decision is made to budget for something to be replaced just simply because of the availability of, of parts. Uh, uh, and you'll, you know, you might have somebody uh, say, well, you know, we, we can't get, get that, um, that circuit board any longer uh, or that relay any longer. <clears throat> always trust but verify. It's, just, it, it's a, you know, I learned that from a mentor of mine, uh, trust but verify goes with, with regard to a lot of things. So when somebody tells you that, um, great. Okay, well, thank you very much for the information, but then start digging, start finding. I found a lot, a number of items that I did not have to replace because I was able to find the parts or the components after a little bit of research. It's not that the person was untruthful with me. They, that's just what they, they, they believe to be true. Um, uh, and that, that's happened with uh, boilers, it's happened with chillers, uh, it's happened with heating and air conditioning equipment, uh, uh, generators and a number of things. So I, I would caution you to, to not just take that and go. Always ask questions, you know, which is a, what this program is about, is ask questions and dig and, and do your research. And the internet, the internet is a wealth of knowledge with regard to that stuff. If you can find it anywhere, you'll find it on, on the net, on eBay or something, somewhere. So mm -hmm. anyway, um, um, <clears throat> I, I would take a look at, uh, so we did a reserve study on a property recently, uh, which went under a massive renovation um, 20 years ago. And of course, everything has come into the end of its life cycle as it's documented. So, you know, one of the things the property manager asked me is, does this mean we have to replace all of this stuff within the next two or three years? I said, no, not really. Let's start pulling these pieces out and looking at the things that we really ought to target. Uh, we also, too, take an evaluation and look with regard to budgeting, you know, maintenance expenses and, um, and, uh, and repair expenses that we've had over the last five years. So one of the first things you, you, you do is, is an accounting research, quite frankly. Start trying to find out where your money's been going you know, um, to start identifying where your priorities are. Um, if the money that you spent, you know, did that lengthen the life of that a piece of equipment or was just, that just a stop gap for the moment? You know, so we take a look at all of those items uh, and, then, um, and then and then put out a plan. 
you know, quite frankly, you can't spend, uh, well, in this particular case, I can't spend $20 million to renovate this property, you know, all at the same time, like we did 20 years ago. Uh, so we need to start phasing things in. So in this particular case, we just started parsing and pulling things out. We're looking at boilers and then the chillers within the next two years after that. We started looking at components that we could, um, we could lengthen the life of, like, you know, by making sure we have good preventive maintenance programs in place. Uh, fan cool units and the small, the smaller uh, pieces of equipment that can be repaired um, for not as much expense, like replacing a fan motor in a fan cool unit or an air handler or something like that to lengthen the life of it, uh, making sure that the filters are changed, the units are cleaned and, and maintained so that uh, uh, we can do those as we do a renovation within a space. So um, <clears throat> You really want to take a take a holistic approach as far as looking at it and then start paring it down into items that you can really comprehend and work with and create a priority list. Does that help? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Sharon mentioned the difficulty in finding uh, employees to work in the mold and remediation uh, business and so on the flip side of that, why am I having so many mold issues or moisture issues, leaks, that kind of thing? Um, and how can I prevent that, those problems? But, you know, yeah, you just said mold, moisture, uh, mold issues, uh, moisture issues, leaks, uh, because they come from a number of different areas, whether it's a, a, you know, a leaking roof, a leaking foundation, uh, uh, improperly operated uh, heating and air conditioning equipment. Uh, I've seen them, um, uh, that matter of fact, I got, got a call from a property manager who asked me a question. So I'm, I'm, you know, I got, all of a sudden I started getting mold in my, my apartment homes, you know, and, and they're not leaking. We can't find a leak anywhere. There's no water. Well, <clears throat> come to find out, um, they had replaced a handful of air conditioners and they had increased the size of the air conditioner because traditionally they had had trouble cooling these these apartments, these top floor apartments and ground floor apartments that were three bedrooms and stuff. So they upsized the air conditioner. The problem was the air conditioner short cycled. They turned on, cooled the place and turned it right off. They weren't dehumidifying the home, the apartment home. So um, that's where the, in that particular case, that's where the moisture was coming from. So the key is obviously start start digging into, you know, where the where the moisture is coming from polling your experts and asking questions and determine, is it, is it humidity? Is it an actual leak? Is it a combination of the two? So you're taking on a leak, but then you're not removing that moisture. Um, I was um, uh, a partner that I worked with uh, on a foundation uh, issue one time. Uh, it was, um, uh, you know, they, they always, the first thing you do is, what are we doing to get the water away from the building? Sure, you might have a leaking foundation. Let's find out what, where that leak in the foundation is. But first, let's let's look at the the, the low cost, no cost things. The the small items like like your gutters getting those down uh, downspouts piped out to where you get the water away from the building. Uh, uh, drip edges that are not in place, so water is hitting right at the foundation and have a chance to run right back into the building. So uh, it, it's real key to to start looking and, and paring that down as well. Um, okay. yeah. I hate to hog the conversation. Doesn't anybody have a question for Rick? <laughs> Feel free to just speak up, turn your mic on and, um, and ask a question. I, um, I'm fascinated by all the, these uh, questions and answers. So don't let me be the only one uh, getting my questions answered. Um, so, um, I don't live in an apartment now, but I, when I did, I, it seemed like there was always, you know, heating and air conditioning problems. It was an older building. Um, can you talk a little bit more about, from an operation standpoint, about handling those complaints? Um, seems like, you know, part of the building's really hot, part of the building's really cold, um, right. you know, and then maybe talk a little bit about, you know, we're heading into uh, winter months, how, how I'm going to prepare my, my property to be ready. Sure, absolutely. So um, uh, one of the things, uh, kind of going back to what I talked about a while ago about upsizing an air conditioner, for instance, um, is if, if you can lay your hands on any, 
as built plans for the property. Uh, any, what the engineers, you know, the engineers went to school for a long time to be able to uh, do the calculations necessary to decide what size air conditioner goes into a home based on the square foot to get the proper run time, to reduce the humidity, to remove the heat, to cool efficiently, heat efficiently, things of that nature. Uh, and um, I've not yet run into a set of plans where somebody has, has not engineered the property properly. So, so find those plans and then, and then work from there and then work off, off of those plans. If you have, if it says that you're supposed to have a 2000, uh, I'm sorry, a two ton unit in the third floor, two bedroom apartment home, that's probably what you're supposed to have. And if that's what's in there, uh, there's, if it's not cooling, there's something else wrong start digging into, you know, the unit is not working the way that it should be working as efficiently as it should be working. Mm -hmm. uh, the fan motor is not moving enough air. I have seen where, uh, you know, it, they, they run into construction and they ran out of room for duct work and they shrunk the duct work. So the engineer was right in the size of the duct work, the size of the unit was right, but they shrunk the duct work. So now the unit's not moving enough air. So if it's not moving enough air, you've essentially reduced the capacity of that air conditioner. So, you know, research and digging and, 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 and looking and inspecting is very, very critical to, to, to finding out when you have those one-off problems or a handful of problems. And also too, I, I would say, be careful of arguing the unusual to the norm. So I've, I've been asked by a property manager, hey, could you come to my property? I'm having a lot of heating and air conditioning calls, right? And so come can you come talk, take a look at it with them. And they say, yeah, everybody is, is, is hot. It's just the air conditioners aren't cooling anywhere. And I'm, first question is, okay, where? You say anywhere, but I know that you have a, you have a target, right? So identify where, because that's critical. When you have three, 400 apartment homes, you can't just say everywhere. You have to look at where I'm having the problem and then address those particular problems. And uh, we kind of, when we have a, a, a large issue with that, we tend to argue, you know, that to the general when it's, when it's really not general. It's just, it's isolated to somewhere and we can identify what those problems are and address them. Uh, so I, I would say with regard to heating and air conditioning, mechanical systems, plumbing leaks, or if you're having uh, domestic hot water issues. A lot of times in apartment homes, you get, uh, you have a return line. So you have to have the right water flow back to the return to the boiler. Otherwise you get a lot of calls for lukewarm water. Uh, you know, my water doesn't get hot or it takes forever to get hot and stuff like that. So um, uh, quite often it can be air trapped. So like 20 apartments down on this end could be getting hot water, but these tens, uh, these 10 units down on this end are not getting flow. Uh, and uh, there's a reason for that. So it, it's a matter of, you know, what that reason is, it could be a number of things. Uh, uh, it's a matter of digging into it and, and, and trying to identify uh, um, what those problems are, where the airlock is coming from, why water's not flowing in that direction, mm -hmm. uh, and things of that nature. Okay. I've noticed that in my property recently where we've had a number of residents who have located to second homes or are not present in the building. And we found that the systems have become airbound from just that kind of a thing where no one's in the apartment running the water. So we've had to institute a maintenance program where every three weeks, someone goes in and makes sure that the traps aren't dried out and that the faucets are being run and that, you know, we're just checking the windows and that sort of thing to make sure that, you know, there isn't any sign of, of um, odor or mold and that the, the pipes are being flushed because I'm, I don't have a fully occupied building as it is. I have a number of second homeowners. And so that it just compounds that whole situation when somebody says, well, I can't get hot water in my kitchen. Well, because there's four people in your tier that aren't around. Right, yes. And, and air will get trapped in there and, and then a bubble will come out and it'll move it around and, and, and it'll, it'll cause directional flow. Uh, absolutely. So, um, so I, I'm, I'm primarily commercial uh, now since I've left, left Southern and a lot of our commercial buildings are, are partially occupied right now too, with everybody working remotely and stuff. And we, the same thing is very important. So the systems are designed to work in unison and they're, they're counting on that occupancy or that, or that use. Uh, if somebody is not running their, 
uh, their air conditioner or the air conditioner is not running as typical because there's not two people in there regularly, uh, then of course that's going to just you know expand right into the next apartment. If they're if they're uh, if they're not removing any heat uh, or moisture, humidity, then of course that's going to travel right right upstairs or downstairs or next door and things of that nature. Absolutely. Anybody else have a question? I have a quick one. Okay. If you do run into issues at your at your properties. How do you choose your vendors? Is it based on relationship or is it referral? So um, as we talked about a while ago with, with PMA uh, and, and networking uh, and getting to know folks, uh, you know, <clears throat> you, you, can, you can call somebody and get to know them on the fly when you need them. You know, and you call them, but I, I prefer to get to know somebody uh, uh, outside of when I actually need them, you know, in, in those networking events and, and getting, you know, when you can have a dialogue with somebody and you can, you can speak with them uh, myself, uh, you gain that, that comfort and, and, and that, um, uh, you know, that experience with the person, you know, now, now that's got to translate into getting the job done, you know, as well. So, uh, but that's where I usually start is I start by getting to know someone as best I can. I, I take a lot of calls. So I get just like any property management professional, uh, whether it be a property manager or director of engineering or, or what have you, you get a lot of sales calls. And I, I, I try, you know, I don't, I'm not hundred percent, but I try to return those calls. I try to have that conversation with them, talk to them and get to know them and things of that nature. Um, I don't, I don't just, you know, what do you say, hit the FU button. <laughs> you know, as they, and send them off to voicemail. I try to answer those calls and, and have a conversation with them and, and listen to them. It's a great, okay, send me some information and then we'll have a follow-up conversation. Because um, if you don't talk to somebody, you won't get a chance to know them. If you don't get a chance to know them, then then you're going to end up uh, finding out when it comes time you have to use them. So does that, does that answer your question? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad all of our networking events are, are working and we'll keep them going as much as we can during this time. Um, all right, any other questions for Rick? Um, this has been a really good session. It's gone very quickly. Um, I, want to, I want to say one thing, mm -hmm. you know, this, the, um, the whole premise behind this thing, ask me anything, uh, ask questions. If it doesn't look right, it's probably not right. If it doesn't sound right, it's probably not right. Start asking questions, get into it, come to a consensus, uh, try to figure out uh, what, no matter what it is, whether it's roofing or carpentry or, or taking a look and doing bit evaluating and things of that nature, just, just ask questions. Absolutely. That's really good advice. <laughs> um, since we have just a minute um, left, is there any other um, advice you can, you can pass along to, property managers and to kind of be ready for the winter coming? So uh, we started having, uh, if, if you're just now talking to your team about um, the winter coming and winter rising, you're, you're late. Yikes. <laughs> you're late. <laughs> you're late. You, you, you should put tickle calendars in for thing, these things well in advance. You know, with, mm -hmm. with Google calendars and making invites for yourself, you can create these calendars and just pop up and remind you. Uh, please do that stuff so because we started having our, our winterization talks in September. Get mm -hmm. your get your uh, snow blowers out. Make sure the spark plug's been been replaced. You got a shear pins for your blowers. You got new shovels and ice ice melt and things of that nature. You start having those conversations in September. Um, follow up conversations in October. You know we just we just had another meeting the other day and it was our second time we brought up brought up those items. We'll start talking about summarization and getting pools ready in as early as February, March. You know, so you really you want to be ahead of the game with regard to that because now you're you're communicating that to your team. Then your team's got to figure out how to fit that into the schedule. So right. just get out in front of it. It's it's not too early uh, to talk about freezing pipes in September. It's really not. Okay. All right, good advice. Well, thank you very much, uh, Rick. This has been a very informative session, and thank you again to Pedro Calero of. PC Construction Group for sponsoring the session. Thanks everybody. Enjoy Thank PM Expo. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.